song. So thank you. Is it audible? Yeah. So today we're gonna see the session called What's Next After Domain Admin. So this would basically walk you through the attacks and techniques that we explored during our pen test engagements. Uh, what we did was we were able to land into Azure after compromising the on-premise network. So this is who are we? Uh, this is me, Venkat Raman Kumar, goes by the handle Red Wolf. I'm currently the chapter lead at OAF chapter Chennai, India. Here is my friend Stira Men goes by the handle Watto. We both work at uh, Securin as security analyst. We hold a couple of red teaming certifications like CRTP, CRTE, and a couple of more from Hack the Box. We love and enjoy red teaming exercises. Currently, we are researching on Active Directory attacks and adversary stimulation. Do check out her handles and uh, blogs. So this is it. Uh, the today's agenda going to be uh, how and why it is important to move into Azure. We're going to start off with some introduction about Azure Active Directory. Uh, we're going to discuss about hybrid identities and the, its authentication methods. We're going to also perform some recon about the tenant registered over Azure uh, from an authenticated as well as unauthenticated perspective. At last, we're going to see the exploitation of uh, compromising Azure from an on-premise network up by abusing various other authentication methods. Before getting into the actual session, I just wanted to emphasize a few points here. This whole session would walk you through the attacks only with the few of the, the assumption, one is which uh, we, you require domain administrator privilege to get through this attack. And it is also important to remember that we're going to see the actual exploitation method. If there is an EDR or any kind of antivirus solution present in your network, first you need to bypass it, after which you can try these attacks to compromise Azure. Over to you, Sriram. You can start. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So let's talk about how it all started. In our pen test engagements during, especially during the privilege escalation phases, after uh, getting an initial foothold over the domain, we identified some common patterns. So the username called msol followed by some hex had uh, replicating directory changes and replicating directory changes all privileges over the domain. So this could allow us to do a DC sync attack. Uh, so what we initially thought is like, if we find a way to compromise this particular user account, you would be able to land as DA uh, so that we could replicate this across all the en other engagements. But what happened was vice versa, we would be, we are landed over Azure. So uh, these are some pictorial representation about the domain associations between the MSOL accounts and the domain. So you could see that MSOL account has get changes and get changes all privileges over the domain. So this could basically allow you to uh, do a DC sync attack uh, to get the ha administrator hash of the domain. Also, uh, there is a generic right privilege over the domain admins group. This would allow you to add yourselves to the domain admins group. So why we need to move into Azure? So basically, it's a lot more fun because uh, we have uh, we can identify a lot of personally identifiable information about the clients, a lot of credit card transaction details, uh, their financial stuffs, and uh, other budget informations. Also, uh, organizations tend to move into Azure uh, AD, since uh, it has a native support from Microsoft, and also it can be easily integrated with on-premises AD. So here are some stats that describes uh, how often the uh, organizations are moving to Azure. And also, here are some stats that describes uh, our Azure compromise on our engagements. Also, nowadays, uh, the clients are not satisfied just by compromising their domain. They look for more interesting stuff. Uh, the scope of privilege escalation increases exponentially with this Azure compromise. So example, if you take a tenant called example.com has been compromised and there may be a lot of domains present within a single tenant. So if you haven't compromised any of those domains on the on-premises network, you could easily create a user on that domain. Uh, with the synchronization permissions, you could just land over to DA on the on-premises network. 
let's now talk about the introduction. So Azure Active Directory is basically a cloud-based identity and access management service uh, used for authentication and authorization purposes. Some key differences between on-premises AD versus Azure AD is like on-premises AD follow a domain for a structure, whereas in Azure AD we have tenants. For authentication purposes, on on-premises AD we use NTLM and Kerberos tickets, whereas in Azure AD we use OAuth, SAML, and OpenID configurations. And Azure on-premises AD has organizational units and GPOs, whereas in Azure AD we have in those. And uh, for querying the data on on-premises AD, we use LDAP, whereas in Azure AD, we use web APIs. So uh, let's now see what is hybrid identity. Microsoft introduced this feature for integrating the Azure AD with the on-premises AD. So this will create a standard user identity for authentication and authorization purposes or to all the resources regardless of the location, whether you are accessing the resource on the on-premises AD or on the Azure AD. This simply means uh, like the users can eliminate the rec requirement for having multiple authentication materials rather than having a single authentication material and access all the resources regardless of their locations. To achieve this, uh, we have three authentication methods. One is password asynchronization, other one is pass through authentication, the other one is Active Directory Federated Services. So let's see one by one. Uh, the password asynchronization, as the name suggests, it is used for synchronizing the passwords between the on-prem AD and the Azure AD. Password authentication is where the user sign-in request is sent over to the on-premises AD for validation and the response is sent back uh, to the Azure AD. In Azure Active, in Active Directory Federated Services, it is based on a third-party entity called the Federated Server. It uses certificate-based authentication mechanisms. So let's now uh, see about some basic enumerations over the tenant. The simple and easiest way you could uh, check if the organization is using the Azure services or not is by just giving uh, the client email ID in the login. And if the login takes you to the password page, then the organization might be using Azure services. Otherwise, it's not going to be using. The other one is by just hitting a get request to the following endpoint, just replacing uh, the domain name with the target domain. If it returns the tenant ID of the domain, then the organization is using the Azure services. Uh, the most common way to uh, enumerate and abuse the Azure services is using AID internals. It is a partial tool uh, used for leveraging uh, the Azure services. So we, you can use these tools in two methods. One is by directly importing the AID internals into the PowerShell or by installing it over the PowerShell. So we can get uh, basic information like tenant name, authentication type, brand name, um, using the following command by just specifying the domain name as a parameter. The same applies for the tenant ID too. We could also gather uh, the number of domains and the domains that are present on the single tenant. To achieve this, you can just use the following command specifying domain name as the parameter. So it lists out all the domains that are present in a single tenant. Azure services are also available at specific domains and subdomains of the root tenant. So you could enumerate this using a tool called MicroBuster, which basically brute forces the subdomains that are present over the Azure services. For example, you could say an organization called example.com uses SharePoint. So the Azure service will be like sharepoint.example.com. So MicroBust will help us uh, to brute force these names. That's all from an authentica unauthenticated perspective. Let's move on to the authenticated enumeration. So once you land as a domain admin, you could just dump the NTDS file from the domain controller and crack it, the crack the ashes. So once you crack the ashes, you could just pray over those clear text credentials uh, on the Azure services to check uh, which user have a valid Azure association to the Azure services. After uh, getting the list of users uh, that are connected to the Azure services, you could just create a credential blob and a request for a token and save it to the cache. So this is considered as a valid authentication material, and you could do the authentic authenticated enumeration further, uh, like getting the sync configuration where the Azure AD sync service is running. And also, it, it includes uh, gathering all the users who are synced to the on-premises network, the devices, the applications that are registered with the Azure. We also have a tool called Azure Hound, which is basically a blood ingester uh, for Azure. 
So once we populate all the data uh, from the Azure, we could just import that it along with the on-premises uh, Bloodhound files. So this would uh, leverage uh, this uh, Blood Azure Hound to get all the available attack pods, uh, exploitable attack pods on Azure Key Wallet, and it will also return all the on-prem users uh, who has uh, edges over to Azure services. It could also retrieve all the users who have global administrator privileges. So uh, let's discuss about Azure Ready Connect. So what is Azure Ready Connect? It is a Microsoft application designed to achieve hybrid identity. When AD Connect is configured with password asynchronization, it just creates two accounts, which is normally a service account, one on Azure and one on on-premises AD. The passwords on the for the service accounts on the on-prem media stored either in a database or in an LSS secrets. The service accounts created in Azure and on-premises AD have the following syntax, whereas in Azure AD we have a sync followed by the server where the Azure AD Connect service is running, followed by a 12 character random string and the tenant name. On on-premises AD, we have MSOL, uh, the username starts with MSOL, followed by the random string and the domain name. So these are considered as high value targets accounts since they have uh, synchronization privileges. These are created solely for the purpose of synchronization. The sync account uh, which is created on the Azure AD is assigned with the role of directory synchronization accounts, which has the privileges to create, modify, and delete users, including those of global administrators. Whereas MSOL accounts have replicating directory changes and replicating directory changes all privileges so that we could do a DC sync attack. So this is the flow of the password as synchronization. Uh, let us say that uh, a user with the password of one access the resources on the on-premises AD. So since Azure AD Connect services is, is configured, the passwords are synchronized in a specified interval so that the user could access the Azure services with the same password. This eliminates the need for the user to have multiple authentication materials. So uh, let's discuss about how to target AD Connect server. Let's say uh, an organization has thousands and thousands of machines. So you just need to concentrate on the servers where AD Connect service is running. For that, uh, you could just use Bloodhound. That could be the right place. You could search for MSOL accounts. So this MSOL account will have the machine name where the Azure AD Connect service is running in their description. So you could also look out for combinations of keywords like sync, AAD, CLD, AZ, Connect, on the host names of the machines. So nowadays, many organizations will have host names related to the purpose. The machine running Azure AD Connect service might have also MSSQL services configured since Azure AD Connect services uses the MSSQL uh, for storing their data and credentials. So this could narrow down your search drastically. So uh, now let's see how to actually take over uh, this Azure AD with uh, password asynchronization. So most of the organization stores the service accounts passwords in LSA. Uh, if we have a DA or a local uh, administrator credentials of the Azure Connect service machine, you could just directly dump the LSA secrets that would give you the clear text credentials of the Azure Connect service that are running. So this image was actually taken from a real world scenario where you could see that there is a clear text credential of the Azure service uh, machine account so this would uh, this is actually a global administrator so this makes us uh, makes our life easy uh, the other way is you can jump just dump the credentials upon accessing the machine directly using uh, aid internals you could just uh, dump the sync credentials along with their clear text credential so uh, upon having all this uh, sync credential data uh, we could use this data to leverage uh, the synchronization capabilities of the azure ad so uh, to have, to be able to compromise the Azure AD with uh, password synchronization uh, technique, we just need a couple of other things, which is uh, the users who have global administrator role configured, and the other is the immutable ID of that global administrator account. Immutable ID is nothing but a uh, unique identifier for, that is given to all the Azure AD users. So with this, we could also use uh, to reset and change all the other properties of the global administrator. Here is a quick demo. Uh, so I will be explaining this. So the first step is to import the AD internals in the partial module. And uh, with this, we could just uh, dump the credentials of the sync account. So upon getting the clear text credential of the sync account, 
we could just uh, create a credential blob and store the credentials. After which, we just need to import AID internals and uh, just request a ticket and save it to cache. So this is basically uh, serves as authentication material for that particular user. So now we are authenticated with that particular user. Next step is to look for uh, the users those have global administrator role configured. So in our case, we could just uh, take CSW as a global administrator. Next step is to get the immutable ID of that user. For that, uh, we could use uh, the other command, get ID int users, and grep only uh, the immutable ID. So as you can see, this throws all the immutable ID, uh, immutable ID of all the users. So we just need a immutable ID of CSW user who is a global admin. So with all this information, uh, we could just uh, uh, use this information to change the properties. Before that, I could I would uh, show you the property properties of the CSW user. So in this case, we are just going to modify the display name for the POC purpose. With this, we could also reset the password of the account and take over that account which will uh, land us as global admin. So here you could see that is the display name as CSW. Now using this command and the immutable ID, which uh, that should be specified uh, to the source anchor, and the display name uh, has been changed, I have been hacked. So uh, upon executing this command, you could see the result code has been uh, printed as success. Uh, so we just need to allow uh, some time for the process to get completed in the back end uh, to actually change uh, the display name. Just wait for it. So you could say the display name has been changed, I have been at. So with this technique, you could even reset the password of that global administrator, and uh, you could just log in as global admin and take over the Azure. So this is how password synchronization works. Over to you. So the next authentication method that we're going to discuss and abuse is seamless SSO. Seamless SSO or single sign-on uh, basically lets the users to sign in automatically to the Azure services when they are connected to their corporate devices on which is present in the corporate network. Uh, they, it can be a VPN or a local network too. So here, the users are not required to enter their passwords. In some cases, the username are also not needed. In that case, the username would be picked uh, from the machine at which they are signed in, uh, which is the corporate device. So the seamless uh, SSO can only be combined with password hash synchronization or pass-through authentication. It cannot be uh, combined with uh, Active Directory Federation services. In this authentication mechanism, a computer account called Azure Read uh, AD SSO AAC is created on the on-premise Active Directory, at which uh, uh, it basically acts as the Azure AD. Uh, this account would uh, be present in each of the Active Directory forest that is connected to Azure. So the authentication flow would be when a user tries to access any sort of Azure resources, a request for the Kerberos ticket would be generated, and it would be sent to the on-premise network. In the on-premise network, the KDC evaluates the request for uh, accessing the Azure, and once the validation is completed, it would be again forwarded to the Azure Active Directory from the client machine where it originated. So this would be the flow here. Uh, here, uh, a user from Contaso uh, tries to access an Azure resource. That is a request for the Kerberos ticket of the account Azure AD SSO AAC is made. And this request is forwarded to the client machine from which it is redirected again to an on-premise network at which uh, the DC validates this request. And once the validation is completed, the Kerberos ticket that is created and encrypted would be sent back to Azure via this client machine. So let's now talk about the abuse case here. 
For this attack, you require certain information like NTLM hash of the machine account that is created, which is Azure AD SSO AAC. You can get this uh, NTLM hash once you have the domain administrator privilege and you can perform a DC sync attack or you can directly dump it from uh, the domain controller. Post which you will require two of the identifiers. One is the immutable ID and another one is the security identifier. So these are the list of commands which you can refer it, uh, refer it later for compromising. Since I have a pre-recorded demo, I would be walking you through that. So yeah, initially what we are going to do is that we're going to import Mimikatz script. It basically uh, allows you to dump the NTLM hash of any accounts that is present over the domain. So here we're going to dump the NTLM hash of Azure AD uh, SSO AAC machine account. So you have the NTLM hash right away. Uh, we're going to be copying it for using later. So this is the NTLM hash that we're going to use. And we're going to import AAD internals again. And to in order to get uh, the list of global administrators and the immutable IDs, uh, we work on assumption that you have a low privileged access over the Azure. So we're going to create a credential blob with a low privileged user who has access to Azure. So once after creating the credential blob, we're going to access the Azure service uh, with the created credential. And we're going to save it to catch. So Yep, you could see that uh, we were able to successfully create it, and the credential is catched over the PowerShell session. So these are the list of global administrators. Again, we're going to take the CSW user. We require uh, the immutable ID again. But in seamless SSO, we also require an another parameter called as the security identifier, which you can get it from the on-premise network. So in order to enumerate it, uh, you can either use uh, Active Directory module that is natively supported by PowerShell, or you can go ahead and use your sort of tools. Here I'm using a script called as PowerView here. So I directly import it into the memory. And we're going to display the details of the user CSW, at which we are, uh, at which we have the security identifier. So let me explain this command. So this is a command used for forging the Kerberos ticket here. You want to create a Kerberos ticket for the user who has the SID specified, which is the CSW user. And we're going to encrypt it. Uh, uh, using the NTLM hash of the machine account that we got earlier, which is Azure AD SSO AAC. So this Kerberos ticket, it would have the privileges of accessing Azure services, impersonating the user called CSW. So let's uh, try to get an access token from Azure. So yeah. You could see that we are uh, trying to get an access token here and storing it directly in a variable so that we can perform actions with that. And you could see that we don't have any sort of errors here. So the access token is retrieved from Azure perfectly. And again, what we're going to do is that we're going to modify the display name of that user to show that we have complete control over that account. So the display name is CSW. 
we gonna modify it to I have been at and you can see that it is done and it's modified so yeah uh, this is an interesting scenario that we encountered in a real world engagement. Here, uh, we had a global administrator privileged hash cracked, and we were able to identify the plain text credential of a global administrator. But in turn, what happened was this guy had MFA enabled, so we weren't able to directly access the Azure portal as a global administrator. So we didn't stop there. What we thought was uh, to find a way another. Uh, to find an another way to get into Azure. So we identified that uh, in this network, the password hash synchronization is configured with seamless SSO. So again, we would be able to forge Kerberos tickets for any sort of uh, Azure users who haven't uh, had the MFA enabled. So we created a low privileged user and enumerated uh, the Azure ACLs using Azure Hound. We identified that one of the IT guy who wasn't part of the global administrator had Azure reset privileges to entire list of users, including the global administrators. So what we thought was uh, we forged the Kerberos ticket impersonating that user and we have the access token too. So we weren't allowed to reset the passwords for any of the users. So what we thought was we can just uh, send, an, uh, send an email right to us stating the this is for POC and what. So this is the command used for sending the email with the access token. So we were able to successfully get to this account. And with this, you can also reset the privileges if you encounter the same scenario in any of your engagements. So let's now talk about next authentication mechanism, uh, which is Active Directory Federation Services. So in this, this basically works on a trust between the on-premise Active Directory uh, federated server and Azure AD. The authentication and authorization are based on a security token, which is provided by the ADFS server that is present on the on-premise network. So during authentication, the federated server creates a SAML token once uh, the value credentials are being entered. And it contains the user information, such as ACLs, user principal name, immutable IDs, et cetera. This SAML token is signed by a valid token signing certificate along with its private key. And these private key and the token signing certificate are only present at the ADFS server which is on the on-premise network. So this ADFS configurations are stored in a database. Uh, mostly it would be MS SQL instances. So this would be the flow. Uh, here we have two of the scenarios. One is a user who uh, is connected local uh, in the local network trying to access Azure, and a user who is present in the external base. So here, uh, this user who is connected to the local environment or the corporate network, when tries to access an Azure resource, he would be redirected to the on-premise ADFS server. Once the user enters the valid set of credential, a token would be, a SAML token would be generated, and they would be redirected to the Azure resource they tried to access along with the SAML token. While considering the external scenario, the external user would be redirected to the web application proxy, which is connected to the ADFS server. Once the valid set of credential is entered, again, the SAML token is generated, and they would be redirected to the on-premise uh, uh, Azure resource. So let's now see the obvious case of it. So basically, we are considering the scenario where we have the domain administrator, right? So if uh, we can. Uh, since you have the domain administrator privilege, you would be able to access the ADFS server with local administrator rights, by which means you would be ac able to access their local MS SQL instances, and you would be able to get the signing certificate along with the private key. 
for exploiting it, we also require the immutable ID of the global administrator or any sort of user whom you are trying to impersonate. Again, we would be using AAD internals here. So this is again the list of commands. Uh, I would be walking you through each one in the video. So you could see the host name starts with the ADFS. So it uh, by which means we are in the ADFS server with the administrator privilege. We're going to import the AAD internals module here too. And we're going to export the certificates. You can export the certificate using this command. And once you have the valid set of certificates, which is listed here, you would be only requiring the ADFS signing certificate, which is the token signing certificate alone for exploiting this uh, mechanism. And uh, we talked about an trust, right? So you would be requiring the identity parameter or the ADFS URL, which is exposed. So with this, only you would be able to generate uh, the SAML token. So you could see you would be using this identifier uh, value, which is an URL of the ADFS server uh, to actually uh, create a SAML token. So this is the command. We are just only piping the identifier here. So again, in order to enumerate the list of users uh, with the global administrator role and getting that uh, immutable ID, you require a low privileged access to Azure. So for which we would be making a sign in. Sorry, this is completely redacted because it was actually taken from a real engagement. So you could see that the sign in uh, is successful and we have the access token catch to the PowerShell. And we would be getting the list of global admins. Uh, we require the immutable ID to create the SAML token of the global admin, right? So these are a whole lot of users, so it's taking. Mm, yep, you could see uh, we are right here with a global administrator, and we are going to copy this immutable ID place here. So. Here, uh, we're going to directly create an access token and supply that access token to open an uh, Office 365 portal here. So here, you could see the immutable ID that is we copied is pasted here. And we're going to pass it along with the ADFS token signing certificate. And we're going to type the uh, identifier parameter here too. So this would basically impersonate that global administrator and open the Office 365 portal with his privileges. So you could see that we have uh, been signed into a private window of Edge. We're going to access the Active Directory portal.
so these are the list of users devices etc we're gonna create a user with a global administrator role here so we're gonna navigate to new user command and, and so the user name is test and we're gonna assign them a role as global administrator So here too you could see that we have three of the domains uh, registered over this tenant. So what happened in this engagement was we were able to compromise all the f all the three uh, domains connected to separate networks. So this was an interesting engagement too. Let's now talk about the final authentication method, which is pass through authentication. In this, the authentication request generated from the Azure AD would be sent to the active uh, domain controller present in the Active Directory environment via the pass-through agent. So in here, the agent or the PTA agent picks up the request and decrypts it using its private key. And the validation of the credential is alone sent to the domain controller, which is present in the on-premise network. Here, the credentials are val uh, if the credentials are valid, it is processed, and the response is sent back to the Azure Active D Directory via the PTA agent. The Azure Active Directory validates uh, this response if the user sign in is successful, and if the user is allowed to access that resource, he would be uh, allowed to do it, or else he would be thrown an error with 403 or access denied. So this would be the PTA flow or pass-through authentication flow. Again, a user makes a sign-in request. It would be uh, directed from Azure Active Directory to pass-through agent, which is present in the on-premise network, at which it is decrypted, and the credentials alone is sent to the domain controller for the verification. Once it is verified, the response is sent back to Azure here. So let's now talk about the abuse case here. Here, the process responsible for transfer of request uh, from Azure Active Directory to on-premise network is Azure AD Connect Authentication Agent Service. So if we could hook into this process and if we could uh, mo monitor the request and response or access the memory during the runtime of the process, we would be able to dump the credentials, right? So we can use PTA spy module from AAD internals again for this purpose, which would be injecting a malicious DLL, which is PTA spy dot DLL into this process. So once it is installed, you would have the credential catched in this CSV, which is hidden. So this would be the final demo. We have installed it successfully. So now we're going to emulate a scenario where a user is trying to access an uh, Azure resource from external or internal. So here, the user, CSW test user, enters the credential. Yep, that is it. So at uh, the server at which the PTA agent is running, now we would be able to access uh, the credentials that flows through the PTA agent. So for which we would be using this command.
So, yeah. And if you want to talk about certain things like how did we configure this lab, we would be present right here. You can discuss about it. Um, we also uh, have a tool which is in development. These all sort of attacks that is being discussed here would be able to, we would be able to do it from the external uh, remotely. If you are interested in contributing, feel free to contact me. I can add you as a collaborator too. So thank you, mercy. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Ram and um, Venkatrama. Yeah. Uh, for coming such a long way, uh, Nandri. <laughs> oh, that's Thank a you. good one. Uh,